What's up, everybody, and welcome back to another episode of the Dead Funny Podcast. I'm your host, Chris. Joining today is my co-host, Kelsey. Whoop, whoop. <laughs> Those yeah. two words kind of morph together a little bit. Kelsey. <laughs> whoop, whoop. Hilst. Hilst. <laughs> Anyways, so we're going to talk about some stuff, but before, we had a conversation off the camera, and I think that this was very important, something that Kelsey brought up that we should address now. Uh, as the majority of you know, both of us are playing the Final Fantasy VII Remake, and I'm sure you are just dying to hear our opinions, unless you've been in my stream and then you're getting my shit as it happens. But, but you st- don't know what I you think. You don't know what Kelsey thinks, and you don't know what she thinks might invoke out of me as well. So cause we've also had I'm anticipating at least one rant. So we'll see what happens. But basically what we want to say was is that this is the podcast. We're going to try to keep as much of that off the podcast as possible because we want to do a review show. When that mm-hmm. review show will happen, I don't know. I still have not beaten the game myself yet. Kelsey's still not beaten the game herself yet. So once we've both beaten it and we feel comfortable doing a review show and giving you good enough content where like we feel that we have everything we want to talk about, we've replayed what we needed to replay, whatever, then we'll sit down, we'll do the review show, and we'll hash it all out there. And then you guys can have that in the comment section. If you feel like we forgot something and you want to throw some questions out there, then we can readdress those as we move forward. But that's where that will happen. Once again, no date on that. I'm also really glad that we're delaying it a little bit because if you are interested in playing this game at all, that gives you a chance to yes. jump into it with your own opinions mm-hmm. and then come and interact with us in the comments or or hear what we have to say and kind of reformat that based on what you think about it and let us Absolutely. know in the comments that we're all just idiots and <laughs> Chris will take you down for that, but you will give that opinion. <laughs> yes, I will absolutely take you down for that. So, but... Other than that, because I can't really say, like, oh, what's new with you, Kelsey? Because me and you both are fucking playing Five Eight Seven right now. So. <laughs> but, Constantly, uh, yeah. my poor husband, before Final Fantasy Seven came out, we spent at least a couple of nights a week, like, watching movies together and things like that. And since it's come out, he keeps going, what do you want to do tonight? I'm like, I just want to play Final Fantasy Seven. And he's like, okay, <laughs> let's go find a game to play. And before any of you think that oh, I'm the worst man. wife in the world, I have to at least, I've turned around at least once and been like, do you want me to not play so you and I can spend time together? And he's like, no, no, it's fine. That's <laughs> My funny. husband does not lie to me. So if it wasn't fine, he would tell me. <laughs> That's funny. Yeah, no, I, uh, the other day I was looking at it, like seriously looking at my time as far as the game is concerned. And I was like, well, I have my one playthrough that's strictly for the stream. And mm-hmm. then I have my master playthrough, which is me doing like all the side missions and stuff like that. So there's like, even though I might be further in the game than you are, there's shit you've done that I haven't because I'm physically not yeah. doing the side quest. So one of the things that I'm keeping my mouth shut exactly. about. Actually. So yeah, so like I still have to go back and do that, and it's like, I'm like, legit or legitimately, I feel like all my time is dominated by this game because it's like whenever I'm not streaming, I'm trying to play that other fucking playthrough. Whenever I'm not playing that, I am streaming. Whenever I'm not doing that, I'm working my full-time job or I'm on here doing recording or I'm doing editing and I'm like, God damn it, there's just not enough time in the day. That's the feeling I'm having too, except <laughs> I'm going, do I go and work out or do I play Final Fantasy VII? And I'm like, well, it's kind of cold outside. It's a Final Fantasy Seven, and I need to eventually not do that, or I'm going to gain all this weight back and be miserable. So I actually adopted a in-house workout, which I'm pretty excited about. Uh, I've been doing Very it for cool. a while. What have you been doing? It feels really good. So you're going to laugh at me for this, and I'm pretty sure everybody else is too. So a oh, long so. time ago, they came out with workout exercises because, like, it was like a whole push and maybe you've seen them before and if you haven't i'll definitely send you a picture of what mine is but and you would like mine due to the fact of who it is but still that it was a big push to get gamers to start working out more so they tried to take a popular character and say like this would be the workout that that character does so i looked up one for final fantasy 7 uh-huh cloud did not have one which i was upset about but but the, zach did but zach did exactly yep. zach did so i've been doing Zach's workout it's actually it's actually a really good workout it literally gets me fucking like sweaty and tired and i do that every morning before i start working. is it just a butt ton of squats 
I kid you not, if one of the section is squats, it's the only section that doesn't have a number of reps. It just says squats for days. <laughs> <laughs> All the other ones have sets and reps. That oh, one just God, says yes. squats for days. And I was like, yes, absolutely, that yes. Was absolutely designed to do what they were talking about. I don't know who you are, but you're a top-notch human being. I was cracking the fuck up. I was like, no way. And then the last section is cardio. And it shows a guy running with a buster blade on his back. So it says weighted cardio. (laughs) It's like 15 minutes of weighted cardio. And I was like, oh my god, dude. That's great. But yeah, no, I started that off. And I, I like it. I like it. It's got a, it's got a lot of different stuff. It, it goes through a lot of different things. But I just the squats for days cracks me up. So I just I just go with what I'm ever doing for like my push ups and shit. I just do it with that many squats. But <clears throat> yeah, it's a it's a pretty it's a pretty decent workout, you know. Because I downloaded a bunch of those when they first came out. And I was like, oh yeah, I'm totally gonna do these. Fucking get buff like Goku. Let's go. Like I knew obviously it's not Goku's actual workout, but still, yeah, you know, shocker. Yeah, right. <laughs> So I was like, oh, yeah, I had one for Link, one for Goku. And I was like, oh, yeah, I'll just like in order to like keep my muscles, you know, guessing what I'm going to do, I'll just switch on and off to different workouts. And uh-huh. then I never touched them. Not once. Not one time did it ever happen. So this is you my know, first time officially doing it. And I'm, I'm liking it so far. For I feel like workout. the only like superhero ish character that we have a very clear understanding of what they do for their workout is One Punch Man. Did you and see? That- I, there's a channel. This is what got me to do that. There was I was literally up one night and I was having trouble sleeping, so I was scrolling through my phone on YouTube and this guy's channel popped up and I don't remember the name of the channel or I'll totally say it, but um he did the One Punch Man workout. Really? What happened? Yes. So like he first he got a whole bunch of uh, of crap because like basically the way he does it is he releases a video for every day that he was doing it and then uh-huh. at the end he does like a super hype video from start to finish. And it's more of like, you know, kind of like a, a, um, a Kai version of it, if you will, where it like it runs through it quickly and it points out the, the important parts. So mm-hmm. and then he takes the other videos off and it's just that one video. So he talks about like his journey of doing it and then showing him doing it and stuff. So dude was skinny as shit for sure. He definitely got I wouldn't say like cut or anything. I would definitely say he like you could see that there was some build. They, they definitely started to form some abs. His calves were huge. Fucking, like, he developed fucking calves. It was fucking nuts. It was nuts. But he wasn't running the full amount of miles that Saitama said he was running every day for the first month. He was trying to ease his way into it. So he got a lot of shit for that. So then he ended up maxing out more miles on the back end in order to make up for that. And he literally, whenever he hit 80, he was like, I'm hitting the brick wall. Like, he's like, this is not even hitting the brick wall. I broke through the fucking brick wall at this point. He goes, I honestly hate waking up because I know at some point I have to do this workout. He's like, I cannot tell you how much I'm ready for this to be over. Because it's 100 days. Like, it's a long mm-hmm. fucking time of not missing a fucking day. Like, fucking Most nuts. people, I would argue, couldn't do that, though. He Most was, people couldn't work out 100 days straight without, <sighs> like... Just, just the willpower it oh, takes. Oh, for to sure, do that, for most sure. Would drop it. I would, uh, yeah, I would be able to do it. Absolutely, and especially what he was doing—a hundred push-ups, hundred sit-ups. All of a sudden, no, fuck that nonsense. No, I, all together, no. And running all those miles, he was running. No, but there was like times where he'd be running, and all of a sudden he'd just get a nosebleed. It's like, well, this is happening. It's like you might want to check yourself. Him. Man. I am proud of him for not just jumping in and being like, I'm going to do all those miles off the bat yeah, because yeah. honestly, you're, you're not meant to do no. that. Your body no. doesn't just jump into <laughs> cardio and running like that. And a, a, a ton of people try. They're like, well, day one, I'm running five miles. It's like, no, uh-uh. Day you one like is half a mile. Just to yeah. Day one is discover, discover where you're at right now. And mm-hmm. that's assuming you are at a place weight wise where you can run without hurting yourself because a lot of people aren't and they go, Oh, the best cardio. I see this mistake all the time and it breaks my heart. People that are not physically fit. So I'm going to say like the, the medical term obese or, or above even overweight to some degree that are just going, I just need to do cardio to get my weight down. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to start running. And that does so much damage to your knees and to Mm -hmm. your ankles and to your hips. And it's a terrible thing to do to your body. Mm -hmm. So basically you're saying, I want this bad enough. I'm going to damage myself when I'm already damaged and I'm willing to damage myself permanently to do it. And it's like, absolutely not. You get in, you start on stair climbers, you start on ellipticals, things that are gentle on your joints until your weight is low enough that you can run with 
without hurting yourself. And then the first time you go running, you mm-hmm. absolutely should be, it's experimental time. How far can I go? How fast can I go? Not pushing yourself, just seeing what your body wants to do and responding to that. And and then kind of setting goals from there. Mm-hmm. Don't jump into this, like, I'm going to run five miles, even though my BMI is 30. And like, no. You are going to hurt yourself and that can cause permanent, like that can permanently stop you from achieving your goals. It's true. And if you're permanently stopping yourself, what have you accomplished? Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. 100%. Sorry for the mini rant, everybody. That makes me crazy angry. Yeah. And like, even with me, you know what I like to do, even like right now, currently with uh, what I'm doing, you know, trying to obviously keep social distancing and stuff like that in mind, because obviously I can't go to the gym, but like. I was planning on possibly moving into a condo at the end of this year, and now I'm starting to look more towards moving into a house. I actually would like to go ahead and start looking into actually financially doing a house uh, because it's starting to turn out more like I can actually do that. And uh, so walking around neighborhoods, just kind of getting a look for what I fucking want. You know, I've never yeah. fucking thought about a house. Doing those walks and getting used to just having my body moving around that much outside and then – Sometimes I'll, all right, cool. I've already walked down this street and saw these houses, but I didn't get to the other side. So I'll go ahead and jog down this side. And then when I get to the other side, I'll walk, take my time. And then just and on and off and on and off, getting your body ready for something before you just jump full, first in. Because you're not going to feel good. Like everybody always says, yeah, the day after the gym, you feel like shit. And that's a good thing. And it is. But within reason. If you yeah. go out there and destroy yourself, it's not going to be fun. You're, you're the, it's not going to be the next day you feel like shit. It's going to be the next couple of days you feel like shit and you physically can't do anything. And then everything you just worked that hard to accomplish, you just completely fucked over because you're going to gain everything back that you just tried and more that you just tried to get away from. It's it's not a good situation. It's about consistent small choices that you, for lack of, I have to say this again, that you consistently make mm-hmm. and it's it's a lifestyle shift. And if you can't do it all at once, that's fine. We all know somebody that just one day was like, I am no longer eating sugar. I am no longer having alcohol. And they drop a ton of weight and then they look amazing and you go, oh, well, if they can do it, I can do it. Not necessarily. And even if it is necessarily, you may be able to do it, but you may not be able to do it right now where you are in your life. Mm-hmm. There may be things they're preventing you from doing that right now that weren't preventing them and they couldn't have done it a year ahead of that time they did it when they did it whatever works or whatever your story is is going to be different than their story and you need to give yourself the permission to do that when i finally lost weight i gave myself a this is going to be a five-year lifestyle change and this is the weight that i want to lose and i can lose at any time over those five years but I'm going to start making small adjustments now. And I didn't do it all in one go. And no, no, absolutely no part of it did I do all in one go. But once I'd done enough changes, mm-hmm. everything just started to continue. It was like, oh, well, I'm still doing this. And I don't really want to do – like I don't, I don't want carbs so badly that I want to work them off at the gym the next day. Like it's just not worth it to me. So, okay, well, let's get some of those out of there. And by making small changes and then making this change a habit – it's easier to then make this change because you've already made this change a habit and you're no longer spending energy to do this one. So making these changes slowly over time and giving yourself the permission to do this in a stair-step measure will actually make you more successful as long as you're the one driving it. If you mm-hmm. don't have the motivation for it, you don't have the motivation for it. And that's, that's maybe a temporary it. state. That is the biggest key there, in my opinion. I mean, I, I'm personally a person that doesn't believe in motivation, I'm more on the aspect of discipline, but they they both still work the same way. If you don't have the willpower to have that discipline to get up and do it every time, or if you're someone who believes in motivation, you don't have that motivation to get out of bed and do it every single time, that's going to be the first thing that's going to stop you every time. 100%. You need to have a reason why you're doing it. That's but you also need simple. to be able to give yourself permission to be like, you know what, I'm not feeling it today. And mm-hmm. I cannot feel it today, but that doesn't change the fact that I'm going to come back tomorrow. I've started a habit and taking a day off can't derail me from that habit and I'm not going to let it derail me. And that's there's a mental space around that that's not easy to manage. No. And I think that's some of the people that I know, that's where they get derailed completely is they give themselves one day and they realized how much more time they had and they go, oh, well, then I don't want to do this at all. And it, that one day, they never come back. Mm-hmm. And so it's giving yourself one day, but it's giving yourself one day intentionally. And I, and I would say something that I feel, you know, and this might just be something that works for me, but this person is something that I feel that works pretty well as well, is not giving myself like 100% like a goal or like a limit I have to hit. A lot of the times for me, it's like my gym has a hot tub. 
I'm like, I want to go to the hot tub today. And then I get there and I'm like, well, I'm already at the gym. So I might as well go ahead and get a workout while I'm in it. And then fucking an hour goes by and I'm like, holy shit, I've completely been working out this entire time. That works a lot more easier than me than me going, all right, I got to go to the gym. I need to get on the fucking treadmill for like 30 minutes. I need to do this. Like that makes me more exhausted thinking about that. And then I'm like, well, fuck, I don't even want to go to the gym now. But I'm like, you know what? I want to go to the gym and I want to enjoy the hot tub. And I get there and I'm like, I'm already here. I'm going to go ahead and work out while I'm here. And then I'll have the you hot like tub as a treat. You like back your way into exactly. it. Exactly. <laughs> 100%. I go there for the fun stuff and then I make myself do the hard stuff so that way I can reward myself with the fun stuff afterwards. 100% how I do it every time. And this is what I love about people working out is that wouldn't work for me at yeah. all. Yeah, see, it but, works different for everybody. And, and you need to always, in my opinion, give yourself space to go, hey, I may try it your way just because, you know, your way might work, but ultimately I'm going to do my way. <laughs> and I'm going to talk to myself and I'm going to understand right. what's going to get me across the line. And and that doesn't have to be what works for you. And anybody that tries to tell you, no, if you don't do it this way, you're going to fail. They're dicks. They're wrong. Ignore them. Uh, Maybe think, remove them from your life, depending on what how often they say this. <laughs> I think something that, that would be pretty smart for us to point out right now is that, I mean – me and Kelsey both work out. Neither one of us are like fitness instructors or anything like that. No, um, not at all. We're not claiming to have any kind of answers. No, we're at just all. talking about What's our own up? journeys. This is our own, our yeah, our own path that we've chosen. It works for us. Doesn't mean it's going to work for you whatsoever. But the point of it is, is that sharing this information could it be something good for somebody, and hopefully yeah. encourage you that maybe if you do try out these and they don't work for you, and then you get something that works, you leave it in the comment section below because then that might be something that might work for someone else or possibly might work better for me or work better for Kelsey than what we're currently doing. You never know what the information is going to do. As long as it's just like, hey, I tried your guys' way, didn't really work that way, but what I found worked for me, that is constructive. That is helpful. That right there could literally change somebody's entire fucking workout because there are plenty of people out there, and I used to know a couple, where it was like, I can't find a way to be able to continue to work out. I just, I've tried so many different ways and I just don't have a way. It's so different, vastly different for every single individual. It's crazy. So it's, it's, yep. there, there's no solid, this is the way you do it. All those videos you see like, oh, you're just not doing it the correct way. This, there is no correct way. There physically yeah. isn't. There those isn't. I know people who work out and eat everything they fucking want. I know people who have to go on extreme diets in order for them to be able to maintain what they want. Like it is so different for every person. It's crazy. There's no sure way to lose weight or get, get fit and stay fit. It's, you need to tr trial and error. You just have to. Until you find what works for you, you have to trial and error. That's just part of it. And you also need to recognize, in my opinion, that what worked for you 15 years ago back when you were thin yeah. is not necessarily it's going to work for you now. Right. Everything about you has changed. Everything, including where you are in life and what's going on in your life. And so like, give yourself space to find something new Absolutely. in this realm. Absolutely. Period. Yeah, no, completely agree. Although I will say this though, uh, due to the whole COVID situation, my gym just actually released a letter letting us know that I'm not going to lose a single day of my membership due to this. That they're yeah. going to add on every single day that I'm not able to go to the gym. They're going to add that onto my membership. Plus, so like every day that I'm out, I'm going to gain a day and a half at the end of my membership, which is pretty sweet, honestly. So that's a great way of making sure that you are motivated to come back because mm -hmm. they know I was thinking about this. I, I, I can't go more than a few days without working out because I realize it has a huge effect for me on my like emotional control and my, my mental clarity and mm -hmm. just kind of how good I feel about life. So when I don't do it, I become crabby and gr grumpy and get angry and mm -hmm. look at my husband. And I'm like, mm, you chewing crackers over there. Like you own them, which is really unfair to my husband who does own those crackers and is eating them and deserves to eat them in peace. And so <laughs> I go work out, I come back, and I'm like, cool, my husband's having a snack. It's chill. I, I would love it. to see Kelsey just look at Scott and be like, you fat fuck. Like, my husband is the you. skinniest he is, string queen in the entire yeah, world. Yeah, he is huge, completely scr scrawny. It's, it's, we we he's, went he's, to he's a like, party, and he was a stick bug, and yeah. it was perfect. Um. <laughs> yeah, that's fair. That's fair. <laughs> but... I've had to figure out a, a thousand and one ways to keep my workouts varied, to do strength as well as distance, as well as like to do all kinds of things. And I've had to figure out that answer in my own home or around my neighborhood. Mm -hmm. And and by around my neighborhood, I mean running around my neighborhood. I don't mean going and like using park equipment because obviously that's a big no-no right now. Right. And that puts gyms at a major disadvantage because they realize once I know how to do that, I don't need them anymore. Yep. 
And so I'm glad to hear that gyms are thinking about that and telling you, hey, we're going to give you extra yeah. so you come back. Yeah, it's also one of those things where it's like you look at that. Yeah, you look at a gym membership and it's like, yeah, you basically got told you had to close down. But at the same time, like, why am I getting penalized for that type deal? You know, or even just put mm-hmm. people, you know, memberships on a suspension or some shit like that. Something, you know, because if I'm really, I mean, we don't know how long it's going to last. This shit lasts till August and they've been closed down since fucking March. I'm paying for all those months that I physically can't go. It's not that I I'm, I don't want to or I'm not trying to risk it. I physically cannot. Like doors are yeah. locked, closed. Like I just drove by do. my gym for the first time since I've been a member at this gym. And I've been up here for quite a number of years now. The first time ever I've drove by and this gym's lights were off. My gym is 24-7, including holidays. This oh, is the first time I've ever seen lights off. Quick moment to talk about how freaking wonderful 24-7 gyms are. Oh, they're amazing. I- Fucking amazing. Never, ever, 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 ever go to a gym that is not 24-7. Holy crap. When I started working out, I didn't want to be in there at the same time. Like I said, I was I was a lot bigger than I am now, and I was really embarrassed about the fact that I was so weak and was so heavy, and I didn't want the beautiful people at the gym that have fitness all figured out. I didn't want them looking at me and seeing me struggle as I was trying to get it all off. Mm-hmm. So I went at 10 o'clock at night. Yeah. And I would work out for two hours because then nobody was in there. And so I knew I could do what I needed to do and nobody would judge me. And as I got to know the gym scene better, I realized nobody was going to judge me anyway. Like that was in my head. People are too busy working on their own gains to give a crap about you. The only thing that they may do is go, hey, we see you working on it. Keep it up. You're doing great. Mm -hmm. That's it. (laughs) But that may also just be my gym because there are some gyms that have toxic cultures. My gym does not have a toxic culture. And once I was able to figure that out and really enjoy my gym for what it was, oh, loved it. Loved it. The people are amazing. Fair enough. Fair enough. Yeah. I mean, my gym is just more along the lines of like people just kind of do their own shit. And that's yeah. really nice. Like I, my gym very much understands the, what I like to call is the natural gym headphone conversation where no one wants to interrupt your workout. No one wants to interrupt your music. No one's trying to get you to take your headset off. So literally someone will walk up to you if you're sitting on a bench and they'll point at the machine and then do a thumbs up. And then you could be like thumbs down and then do like, you know, hold up too. Like I got two more reps or something and then they'll just shake their head. Yes. And then go off and do something and then come back in a little bit. Like it's great. It's fantastic. I never had to take my headset off and that's great because I used to go to YMCA. I'm not going to say where I go now, but I used to go to the YMCA and fucking a, when I had to constantly pull my headphones off because somebody's asking me a question, it was nuts. Like guys, you are fucking up my routine right now. Like, can I just do what I came here to do? And when the machine's not in use, you can fucking have it. Like, that's how that works. I understand you have a specific routine you're trying to do. You need this machine. Fantastic. Let me pump this out and then you can take it. I'm done. You know? So, but yeah, working where I work out where I work now. Oh, God, I'm so spoiled. I love that fucking gym so much. <laughs> oh, God. Oh, love it. But yeah, no, I mean, it's been kind of cool. Like, I'm kind of getting to see kind of what houses and stuff are around me and kind of like what I'm looking for and. It's more about just understanding my financial situation as far as going to a house because I've never done that before. I've went from an apartment to a condo and now back to an apartment. But, yeah, I'm interested. I'm very interested. I'm talking to my realtor and we're, we're looking over some things. And he's a really, really solid guy. Uh, he's been dealing with me for almost a year now. And uh, that's when I was first entertaining condos and stuff like that. And so now he's he, knowing that he hasn't got anything out of me. It's like, yeah, let's let's focus on an area that one you like and see what we can find in there that actually is going to work what your actual budget is. So he's, he's a pretty cool guy. That's good. I'm glad you found a realtor you like. Yeah. I was hesitant about home ownership for a while because I'm like, there's so many hidden costs with home ownership so that you many. don't realize realize until you're already in it. And then you're like, well, ugh. like I wanted a yard. Yeah, but I didn't think I needed to get all these things to actually maintain that yard and didn't mm-hmm. think I needed to now make the time in my schedule to maintain that yard. And now I'm really angry because I didn't want to have to do those things, but I have to because I wanted a house with a yard. And to be clear, I've had none of those reactions. I had all those thoughts before I bought the house, thank God. Mm -hmm. (laughs) And so I was able to, like, manage my expectations well. But there's a lot of hidden costs of the house. Oh, yeah. Something that I would like to point out, just because I see this happening a lot, and just in case some uh, some people that are watching our channel are also those people that are getting excited about the fact that, you know, (laughs) 
why you would get excited about the coronavirus destroying our economy, I don't know. But some people are excited that, you know, it's going to make houses a lot fucking cheaper, especially if the housing market crashes. Let me tell you something. Yeah, it'll be cheaper up front. You will pay far out the ass later on down the road. That will happen. It happened the first time it happened. It definitely happened the first time the housing market crashed. All these people were getting cheap houses. That shit comes back later. There are lots of different fees and, and written things and contracts and shit. They will find a way to get their money. That will happen. Don't don't be an idiot. That's all I can say on that one. From, from last podcast, don't be an idiot. Or that wasn't even a podcast. That was a DFU. From last DFU. Don't be an idiot. All right? That, that actually be tomorrow's episode. Don't be an idiot, you know? <laughs> That's a lasting, yeah. dead, funny motto. Uh, don't yeah. be an idiot. Yeah, I mean, we don't it, always. It, it's obey. cool to get excited, but once again, like I said, no, no one's gonna be like, "Oh, this is six hundred thousand dollars," and it's like, now this is like a hundred and fifty thousand dollars, and you think that you're gonna permanently get that discount? That is not how that works. Not even close. They will find a way to charge you far out the ass, whether it's now or later. It will happen. So just be smart. Whenever you're looking for a house, don't get all excited because well, you should be excited because the economy's crashing. Yeah, not that it is, but if it does. You shouldn't be excited about that. Like, that's that's just, it's not good for anybody, like, at all. As a country, that is not good for us. But I will say, just be smart. Just, just, just be smart. I encourage being smart. I do recommend, like, if you're in the market paying attention, mm-hmm. don't oh, be for taken sure. advantage of. I also think that there's a lot of, there was a lot of complicating and mitigating factors that surrounded the original housing crisis that is not necessarily present in this particular circumstance oh, for sure. that makes the housing investment less dangerous. But I do agree that going into it with your eyes open and an expectation that you you really need to get a lawyer involved or somebody that's on your side of things is highly recommended. <laughs> like a buyer's agent would probably be very smart for you in this situation. Yeah, it's going to cost you a little bit more fee-wise, but... That literally is their job is to look out for you. Like that's 100% of what their job is. So that's an option. But yeah. I and a lot of those just... people, their jobs are, um, their best business is by word of mouth. And so them mm-hmm. doing a good job for you is is the best way they can keep their job and get more clients. 100%. So. 100%. So yeah, just wanted to throw that in there since we're talking about houses. And that's something that I've been seeing a lot recently. It's like a lot of memes where it's like all these millennials are getting ready to buy a house. and da, 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 da. It's like... Let me take a second to talk to my peoples right quick. You know, <laughs> a PSA out there. But yeah. So yeah, no. I, I just think it's been kind of, I mean, I'm trying to make the best situation out of, you know, a situation that's not necessarily the best for a lot of people right now. And, you know, if it's just something on like how I share on how I'm doing my day, if that helps, fantastic. But yeah, it's just been something that's kind of nice just to walk through and be like, mm, you know what? I like the way that garage is done. That's the kind of garage that I want. That right there. Cool. Let's find something better because this house looks like shit. So, and it's not <laughs> what I want. I will say this, Kelsey. There's this one house that I really want really bad. Mm-hmm. And I won't say where it's at, but I call it number 18 because that's the name. That's the number that's on the mailbox. Number 18, right? There's a house directly across the street that looks like a witch would live in there. And I'm all like, every other house on this block looks fucking phenomenal. But this one house, and I'm like, you motherfucker, you. Like, damn it. Ugh. Not that number 18 will be available when I'm ready, but goddamn, I love number 18 so good. It's so good. Ugh. There are houses that I've fallen in love with. There's one just down the road from where my parents live that I'm like, this, I love everything about about this i want this house so badly and they actually texted me recently because they're like fyi it's for sale and i'm like Ooh. dude 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 don't say that because do that that's how me. i move halfway across the country yep, to get this freaking house me. don't do this and uh i it's just it's a dream like if i ever could if that house is on the market when if i'm in that market and that house is there that's happening and i may make irrational decisions to make that happen and my poor husband's just gonna be drug along for the ride <laughs> Poor Scott. Poor Scott. Well, hopefully at that point, we'll all be making some dead funny money. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> that dead funny money better be good money. Let's be real. One day, hopefully. We'll see. I just love that. That's a Kevin Hart joke where he's sitting there talking about the first time he had ever done drugs with his wife. 
And I can't remember what it was, but he's like, it's just one night they're like, yeah, there's like, just like take ecstasy or something. And he's like, man, this shit had me fucked up. He's like, we never do this ever, but the kids are going to be gone for a solid two weeks. And we're like, let's just do something spontaneous together. And he's all like, he's like, he's like, I, she was having a good time. He's like me for some reason. It made me think I was a drug, like, like a drug dealer. He's like the entire time I'm walking around. He's like, I thought my gun, my hand was a gun. So I'm walking around like. Oh man, I gotta be careful. These cops, they're trying to get on me. All these people, they're trying. She's like, stop, chill out, be, be, it's okay. What are you worried about? He's all like, what do you mean what I'm worried about? I got all these bricks. I gotta cut them, wrap them, sell them, cut, cut, you know? That's how it's done. And then she's all like, you sell drugs? He's all like, of course I sell drugs. What do you think I'm out here making all this funny money, huh? You think I just make money from telling jokes? And it's all like, I mean, he's the number one comedian in the world right now. I mean, he's, he's making serious say, fucking money. He got obviously. high enough to forget what he did for a living and become yeah. a stereotype? Yeah, and he's just like, you think I'm out here making funny money? I was like, that's pretty fucking good. That's oh some deep-seated disbelief. He made, <laughs> good lord. Oh, he! Oh, God damn it, he cracks me up. <laughs> Come out here making this funny money. Oh my gosh, show was great. Oh. I hear more of Kevin Hart's jokes through Chris than I have ever heard of Kevin Hart. You need just to, to just be clear. His stand-ups are so good. They're all on Netflix. They're so good. They're so good. Dave Chappelle and Kevin Hart. Those are my two favorites. Like, oh, they're so good. Oh, I haven't watched a stand-up show in a minute. I need to. No, Probably, but that would out. imply that you stopped hit playing Final Fantasy VII for 15 that minutes. Would, <laughs> that would. Like, literally, as soon as we're done with this podcast, I'm literally taking a shower and then probably playing Final Fantasy VII. Getting ready to stream again. So My plan is the same, but just so our viewers are very aware, we are a state away from each other. <laughs> like, we are not doing oh, this with each other, but I'm okay. doing the exact same so thing. So you don't want to take a shower with me. Okay! We're not having that conversation. <laughs> We're uh, not having that conversation now. We're not having that conversation on the pod. We're just not. We're not doing this. I'm offended. I want to see comments do. down below. Hashtag nope. Showers, Chris. Not Kelsey. Nope. I'm just saying, team. I shower. Well, actually, you know what? Let's not do that because yeah, we, we're going to get into some, some dangerous situations here. Let's, let's yeah. just not. Let's just. You might get I'm hit officially... on a lot more than you're comfortable with. <laughs> Yeah, I, 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 never mind. I'm just gonna leave <laughs> it's that. It's dawning on Chris that. how stupid what he said was. Yeah, it, it hit me really fucking fast. Woo! <laughs> if only it hit you before you said it. <laughs> it didn't. It normally never does. I am the king of putting my foot in my own mouth for sure. Ugh. Ugh. That happened. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Moving away from that. So. Glad that that was at almost the end of the podcast. What a great fucking part of me wants to that, like help save you and help you save this, but nope. the rest of me's like, nah, nah, Just let, let him burn. ride it out. It's yeah, hilarious. It it's great. Oh, fuck me, right? <clears throat> Dude, not the thing to say right now. <laughs> oh man. Whew. If it makes you feel better, the stuff that I'm going to say to you when we stop recording, you'll understand a hundred percent why I stopped. Uh, cause it's probably different than what you're thinking now. But anyway, so yeah, Final probably. Fantasy VII at some point. Mm-hmm. Yeah, what is today? Wednesday? Yeah, Wednesday. <laughs> well, I was just trying to think of like when this podcast comes out, if it would even be worth announcing what I was going to announce, but I don't think it would be. So I guess I could just say this. If I have beat the game by then, and I have raffled off, if one of you were the winner, I would love for you to comment below and let me know that you were the winner and that this is where you got it from. That'd be great. That would be. And for those of you who don't know what I'm talking about, it's probably because you missed out on that opportunity. And I'm sorry, but there will be more down the road. Not right now, but down the road. Some Not point. right now. But yeah. <sighs> but yeah, no, I'm excited. I mean, I was talking to my boss about it today and uh, he's a huge Final Fantasy fan. And he was just asking me like, you know, my thoughts on it so far and stuff like that. And I was just like, it's, it's, well, I started talking about it. He cut me off like two minutes in. It was like, you are fanboying so hard right now. And it is ridiculous. And I was like, come on. You it's fun this. to watch the world realize how intensely you fanboy. Oh, like I watch sure. people's faces when you start talking and they're like, oh, this is cool. Oh, this is, whoa, he's really mm. in this. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, yeah. Super pumped. Um, but, yeah. And it's, like, stuff, like, with my mom, too. Her being able to just, like, watch me play it is pretty cool. 
and being able to like see how the game is going and stuff like that because a lot of those games you know especially newer paced games like you know the, the the combat and battle system in this one is just something that i don't think a lot of other generations before us would you know be as comfortable playing with compared to what they were used to <clears throat> it's a lot sped up comparatively so oh i had something i wanted to tell you hmm um, totally not Final Fantasy VII related. That's I fine. finally got an Overwatch account and started playing Overwatch, and it's really fun. I did see that. I was like, what the hell got Kelsey into Overwatch? How did that happen? I've got a, a friend here uh, where I live that is really into it and has been trying for literal years to get me into it. Oh, and yeah. I am, I'm not a slow adopter in general, but for some reason with this, I was. And I've finally started playing it, and I I played with bots to kind of figure out what I enjoyed, and people kept sending me things and, and being nice to me, and I thought it was just the bots that were programmed to be nice to me. Turns out, no, those were, those were people that were trying to be nice to me that I just ignored mm. because I didn't know how the game worked. <laughs> Yeah. But it was it was really fun, and I'm definitely going to play more. So at some point, yeah. um, I may want to... Do you still play it all? Yeah, I still play Overwatch every once in a while. Yeah, yeah. at some point when you're done with your Final Fantasy VII and you're back to like other Normal. things, yeah. I'd like to introduce you to the group that I play with, because yeah, I, sure. I think you could make them better, and you could make us better, and we could make you... It'd be a good time, basically. Yeah, I have, I have a lot of fun, for sure. What, uh, what are you currently playing a lot of right now, as far as character-wise? Oh, character-wise. Um, hang on. I really enjoy Symmetra. Symmetra? Okay. Yeah. I, I enjoyed Symmetra. Ash, and then I saw somebody, I ended up playing something where somebody else took Ash, and she they played her so much better than I played her mm. that I was like, I, I, I can't unless nobody else has grabbed her because I need to figure out how to do that better because she's just so cool. Yeah, so really she's, like she's a hard character to play for sure. I also really like um, Sigma, and I know he's really hard to play, and so I know I should play harder, like play more with him to get better at him. But I really like him. Yeah, he's the only character at this point that I don't really know that much about because he was he was released new around the time where I was kind of taking a break from it. So oh, he's he's cool. I like him. Yeah, I watched his uh his his introduction video to actually see what his moves were, but uh, now I've actually never played against a Sigma yet or with a Sigma yet. So. Normally in games, I really enjoy being, <laughs> I just enjoy walking into the middle of a bunch of fighting people and fighting and killing everybody. I'm just like, I, in my ideal yeah. world, I'd probably be a dwarf with a big old swinging act or a swinging great hammer. And I just turn around and turn into a little like Tasmanian pinwheel and just go Almost through spin. people and mow yeah. them down. That would be, that would be me in an ideal world. But since I can't do that, I actually figured I hated most of the tanks in the game, but really? loved playing the damage characters, which took me by surprise so yeah my first one that i got drawn into big and it's, it's still my favorite is genji i love genji so much that's my guy oh i really enjoyed playing so, him. so much so much genji but he was another one where i realized that i could play him so much better if i knew what the hell i was doing or somebody would show me how to do it but my my top like that i do very well at and it's one of those like where it's like if the team isn't doing so well i always switch to just to kind of help correct the curve Mm -hmm. is Reinhardt. My Reinhardt is fucking stupid. Like, I'm so fucking good with Reinhardt. It's dumb. Like, oh my god. I love Reinhardt. He's so fucking good. Like, I have so many videos, and I know I put a couple of them on the Dead Funny Plays of where, like, I've literally slaughtered the entire team by myself. Like, just up there by myself, just hammering down everybody, slashing them into a wall, and then just going to fucking town. <laughs> like... Oh, See, the first time I played so Reinhardt, good. I hated him, and then I had, like, we were playing some kind of mission where I had to play as him, it was the only option left, mm -hmm. and so I'm like, alright, I guess I'll just kind of figure it out, and I ended up loving him by the end of it, but again, if you were willing to teach me how to play Reinhardt, and, like, show so me a little good. bit better ways of doing it, I would be all over that, because until I really spent a lot of time playing with him, I didn't like him. Yeah, that's fair. I just love it whenever he casts his like ultimate movie. He's just like hammer it down. I fucking love it. I'm like, yeah. Every time I say, it, I'm like, let's go. Uh, I'm about to kill somebody. That shit's happening. Uh, yeah, no, it's a lot of fun. It's a lot of fun. Uh, me, my uh, best friend Mike, and his wife uh, play quite frequently because that's her favorite game and that's the main game that she likes to play. She fucking loves Overwatch. And she's a mercy main. She loves being the healer, loves being in the ah. back. And so what I used to always do that pissed her off is because like there's always like this fan fiction that Genji and Mercy are an, an item. 
And mm-hmm. so, like, as soon as I get in the game, I'll pick Genji and I'll just be running around the entire time. I'll just be spamming, I need healing. I need healing. I need healing. So she's like, shut the fuck up. And she actually posted something the other day, and it cracked me the fuck up. I can't remember what it was, but it was on Facebook. And it was making fun of the fact that the one time I did need healing from her, I was, like, halfway across the map. She's like, realistically, how the fuck do you think I'm going to get all the way over there to you? And I was just like, I need healing. I need healing. I need healing. <laughs> And like yeah. I actually mean it this time, and you're. Yeah. She's like, "Well, you're sh- you're fucked, dude. You are shit out of luck this time, sir." Yeah, like it was you ran off, you did that to yourself. One of my yeah. favorite times playing. Scott was playing the healer, and I was playing some damage character. And one guy just kept like we had a rando with us, and he just kept running away, and like he he kept needing healing. And Scott's like, "I can't bring him back when he's nowhere near the rest of you." And like all the action is happening here. He's way over there in a corner. We don't know why. That's not where anything's happening. What the hell is he doing? <laughs> like Scott's just dealing with this person's incompetence and it was cracking me up. It's also nice to hear it not being said about me. <laughs> oh, here we go. Here we go. She she put what I tell Chris when he is on the other side of the map is Genji spamming the healing request. And it's it's a it's a SpongeBob meme, but it's just SpongeBob laying in the hands. It's like cl- come closer. I need <laughs> I need, and then it goes, I need you to fucking stop running so I can heal your dumb ass already. <laughs> and it's true, because I'll say, I need healing, and then she'll go to do her flying, and I'm already fucking taking off. I'm like, just running. I'm just like, I'll just spam it as I'm getting to my next situation. Like, I need healing. I need healing. I'm like, God damn it, where are you at? <laughs> like, you know, fucking with her, obviously not actually mad. You know, we get on each other all the time. It's pretty great. That's fantastic. Yeah, it's fun whenever you can sit down and just have, like, friends and stuff like that. And I'm pretty sure Mike and uh, his wife love doing it due to the fact that, you know, like I said, they it's, like, something they can do together. And then yeah. she can also enjoy playing with his friends and his family. And that kind of makes us or her friends and her family and shit like that. So it's a lot of fun. We enjoy it. <clears throat> and you and I have been talking about playing games together for a long time. I was actually going it. to we say. We actually really need to do this because we do like each other outside of this context. I was actually going to say, I think I finally have a situation that's going to happen. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> Around. Well, I can't I can't say something specific, too specific here. So let me let me let me think of the, the correct way to say it. Let's just say coming up soon. I'm going to have a very interesting offer for you to come play Don't Starve Together for free. For free. Because I bought it and got a free copy that I'm giving to you for free to come play with a lot of people that you've been wanting to meet. One of them being my madre. Because she fucking plays all the time. Yes. So, God, yes. My only issue with this is what if I fuck up and I consistently fuck up and like like as I'm learning and Out they don't of like the these results. Four people that are playing and you would be the fifth, only me and James know what the fuck we're doing. No one else does. Like okay, everyone so else is learning. still new. Yes, every My mom has okay. played the game multiple times. It's it's more of I have to sometimes, because the funny part is, is like whenever you have like food or something on you, you can just give food to people or you could force. I had to force feed my mom multiple <laughs> times because she'll be like, I'm dying. I'm dying. I'm like, why? She'll be like, because I'm starving. I'm like, Jesus Christ, here. And my dude's just shoving meatballs in my mom's fucking face. Like, just eat these. Okay. Just take these and go. <clears throat> if she's I'm not, not starving, oh my if God. If she's love it. not at base starving. She's lighting a fucking forest on fire and just burning shit down to the ground. <laughs> I support uh, this behavior. To be fair, to be fair, whenever it comes to like collecting materials, like I can tell her, like, mom, I need logs. She'll just show up out of nowhere with like fucking four twenty stacks of logs. I'm like, here you go. She just I had to make her an axe. And so I'm like that that's the best way to keep her busy. I'll just be like, I'll make her two golden axes and I'll be like, here, take these. And then she'll come back when they're both broken and gone. And she'll be like Okay, here's what I got. And let's just drop it all at base. Like, so here's what your I got. mom just needs direction. Like, yeah, she needs here. direction for sure, 100%. But it's just funny because like, she'll just sit there and be like, I'm starving. There are fridges right next to you. Like literally <laughs> right there with food. Like I don't know what else you want me to do. So she'll just like, like – there's plenty of times where she'll be good. The best part that I like – and I know she's going to talk so much shit in the comments when she watches this. The, the best part that I like do the so. most is whenever – I'm out on a mission with James. Like, me and James are out trying to accomplish something. And then, like, we'll run into my mom. And so then James will always be like, oh, why don't you come with us and make this mission easier? 
And so then she'll come with us, and then we'll get to the point where we're like, we're in a bad situation, but me and James knew that was going to happen to the beginning with. So now she's 100% pissed off at us. Like, well, I was doing fine by myself. And it was like, oh, we'll come with Christopher and James, and we'll go see what the fuck they're doing. And now I'm starving, and I've got, like, no health. <laughs> so, yeah, it's pretty funny. I like that no matter what's happening, her sass doesn't go away. No, That's not cool. even close. Good. Not even close. Everything you gotta else, keep something. Everything else is her. It's somebody else's fault. One hundred percent. One hundred percent. It's great. It's great. So I'm getting hit by the darkness. Okay, cool. Well, if I can bring up a light. Well, my lighter broke. Okay, well, cool. Make another one. Well, you didn't tell me how to do that. What? I, I'm not playing the same character as you. I don't know how your character builds your character specific shit. You have one spot in the menu that shows you everything your character builds to her specifics. All you have to do is look at it. Tell me what you need. I'll give it to you. <laughs> oh, the other day she was so upset because her character has a little teddy bear. And his name is uh-huh. Bernie. And so when she starts going insane and the shadow monsters start attacking her, she could just drop the teddy bear. And the teddy bear actually activates and turns to a gigantic teddy bear and starts fighting the shadow monsters back to keep Aww. her safe. That's so cute. The other day she was running around and there were some toads out. And toads, they hit you with their tongue. And when they do, they make you drop an item. Well, they made her drop her teddy bear, and she for, she didn't know that. So she she's been without her teddy bear for like two weeks in in game time. Oh no! And I actually found it the other day when I was out exploring, and then I brought it back. Well, we actually had a situation happen where like all of us ended up dying because we weren't prepared for what was about to happen, and so mm-hmm. I rolled it back a couple days to give us enough time, and I rolled it back before I picked up the teddy bear. Oh. <laughs> and I was like, and and the best part was is like she didn't know that we had to roll the game back. She ended up getting off, and I was like. She's going to be so mad. She's going to get back online and be like, where the fuck is Bernie at? And it's going to be like, well, about that. So We had to choose between Bernie's life or all or, of us or living. We chose all of us. And she's going to be like, you aren't worth that. Bring my teddy bear back. <laughs> well, the best part is, is like whenever we're like fighting bosses and shit, I just, I'll just tell her, like, your character is weak. You're going to die. And so like, she does have one of the weaker stat characters, but her character mm-hmm. does come in, into play in certain different situations. And so I'll be like, just give me Bernie. And I'll take him with me because whenever you go to fight the boss, like my character's a tank. He he takes a lot of damage, so I'm always front line against the boss. The monsters instantly bring your sanity down. So then I just drop Bernie next to me, and then he fights all the fucking shadow monsters that are around me while I just beat the fuck out of the boss. So I'm just like, just give me your teddy bear. So I mainly use him anyway, but it's, she does use him. So but yeah, it's pretty funny. So yeah, so that might be coming up. That could be point. cool. So yeah, I'll keep you in the loop on that one. But I was actually looking through and I was like, oh, I have a free copy of Don't Starve Together. And that has Kelsey's name all on it. So <laughs> it's like, what better way to get somebody into a game than giving them a free copy? So That is a good way of doing it. it and is. that will definitely work. It is. So yeah, I thought you would enjoy that. But uh, yeah, I'll try that out. And then Overwatch too. Because you play yeah. on the PC, right? Yeah. Sweet. Yeah. I believe my As does everybody else that I play with right oh, now. Yeah. How, how big is your group so far? Um, right, they actually had a group of four, and then one of them randomly is busy, and so I'll jump in. And um, like the group of the group I could actually be like get together is me, Scott, and a friend of ours here. Okay. And so the just three, and then with you, that'd be the fourth that we would need. So. Okay. I had never watched five or six. I thought it was only four. I'm pretty sure it's like five or six. I'm almost sure Overwatch is a five. All, five all the all the maps we did were only four. Mm. Because we always had the three of us in one rando. Well, then you guys might be playing a specific game type versus the original game type. Then that's probably what that is. I th- think we were playing. Yeah, we were playing when there's a special event going on, the uh, player versus environment event, and so we were doing that. Got you. So have you actually played player versus player yet? Uh, you, well, yeah, I mean, there was, I think, yeah, because I think so. I think so. I know I was playing against other people at least once. No, it's teams of six, so six on six. Yeah, All right. The actual game size. So, yeah, because they, they do have stuff where it's like 3v3. Like, that's probably my favorite game type whenever I'm, like, really just trying to fuck around. I'm tired of, like, playing the original version of Overwatch. They have a game mm-hmm. type called 3v3 Deathmatch, and it's like you spawn in, it's your three, and then the other team's three. And then you kill the uh, you, like literally. It's like you die. You're out of the game for that round oh. completely. You don't you don't spawn back. But the even better part is, is that if your team wins, you can't choose those same three characters again. You have to so pick different. Way... You physically have to pick different characters. If you lose, you can Brilliant. pick those characters again. But if you win, you cannot choose those three again. 
So like we'll always try to switch it up to where it's like, all right, cool. I'm going to play my third best. Mike plays his second. James plays his first. And then we switch it. I play my first. Mike plays his third. James plays his second type deal. So that way we constantly have like that at least one strong person in there. So, mm -hmm. yeah, that's a lot of fun. I like that one a lot. That's too. fantastic. But other than that, yeah, that's just a normal game. I was like, I'm pretty sure it's fucking six. I was like, I'm almost 100% positive on that. So, yeah, that's a big game type. Sweet. Yeah, no, we'll have to fucking finally actually play a game together. I don't think me and you have ever played a game together besides, like, probably like Mario Kart or some shit in person. Yeah, we've well, we've never played anything, I mean, other than for the channel. Like, just us right, hanging out. Right, that's what out. I'm talking about. Yeah, just us yeah. hanging out. I think we've only ever done anything in person whenever I was at yeah. your house that one time. Mm -hmm. Fun. Fun. Yeah, but I did see that the other day. I was like, Kelsey playing Overwatch. Because it said it in <laughs> my Discord. I saw that you were on doing something. I figured you were going to say, say <laughs> yeah. something at some point. Yeah, I was literally just scrolling through, and I was like, Kelsey playing Overwatch. What's happening here? Growing as a person, guys. Oh, shit. <laughs> well, it's funny, because I got this other friend who doesn't play that, that many video games, and during this quarantine, she's picked up video games hardcore. So she started Good. playing Assassin's Creed, and I was just all like, oh, shit. And I was like, have you tried the multiplayer yet? And she's all like... Oh, I haven't gotten into that yet. She's like, I'm thinking about it. And I was like, well, you got to crawl before you walk. You'll be all right. Because she's like, I'm still trying to get used to the controller. Da, 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 da. And I was all like, it's okay. We'll get there. But it's just funny. Like, a lot more people are getting into video games right now. And I was seeing those memes where it's all like, remember 10 years ago, it was all video games or what's wrong with the society. Da, 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 da. And it's all like, and now y'all come crawling back. <laughs> video games are saving us. <laughs> so, oh, well, that's funny. But we're going to go ahead and wrap it up. If you enjoyed this content, make sure you like and subscribe. Also, hit that notification. That way you get notified every time we upload another episode. But hit us in the comment section below. Let us know your thoughts on our workout aspect. You know, we had a pretty lengthy conversation about that, you know. Indeed. Yeah. And, uh, you know, if you've got any other questions on things that you think, you know, maybe me and Kelsey might have some insight on as far as specific workout regiments or anything else like that, feel free to throw them down there. We're always down to give you guys some helpful tips. But once again, we do not have the answers for anything because mm -hmm. it is completely subjective to the person. So that being said. And we are not medical professionals and we're not in medical any professionals way, shape, or form. At all. No, this is just we're working out. It's working for us. So we're willing to throw it out there. <clears throat> but also make sure to hit us up on all the different social links as well as the twitches as well we got people down there playing games um i will announce this uh brandon did recently finally step up and get himself a big boy computer and he's Woo! super excited about it so his twitch is definitely going to be popping soon and we will be trying to help him get to affiliate so if someone wants to be participating in that let me know and whenever we get it going you can kind of help him get to affiliate i'm sure he would really appreciate it uh, so I know he's super pumped for that. He's just waiting for a webcam. And as most of you know, webcams are through the roof right now in price due to COVID. Woo woo. So <laughs> gonna if you're wait all for curious, that. he's amazingly funny and he's a oh, great God. human being and you're going to enjoy watching him. You yeah. just are. Just, if you're here, you're going to love watching him. There, there's plenty of content for you guys to go see Brandon on for sure. 100%. Yeah, we've got yeah, it. We've already got Go find it. Yeah. Yeah. He's, he's funny and he plays a, a wide variety of games. So you won't, you won't be bored watching his streams. Um, but other than that, I hope you guys have a great rest of your week, and we will see you next time.